I think that this bundle is a banger, basically. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. Humble is back, yes, as always, this time of the month, our favorite time of the month, it is the August 2020 Humble Choice Bundle, and you get all the games, which usually I do these videos and I'm like, well, you could drop these games out. Well, guess what? If you're, if you're premium or classic, I think that's what it's called, then you get all of them. So that's super awesome, especially because there are quite a few good games in here. There's also some turds, but <laughs> I think they might appeal to some people, just not to me in particular. So take everything that I say here with a grain of salt. And with all that said, let's take a look at these games. We've got Vampire, Hello Neighbor, and the Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek DLC. Wargroove, oh yeah. Call of Cthulhu, Little Big Workshop, Genesis Alpha 1 Deluxe Edition, Automa Chef, Through the Darkest of Times, American Fugitive, The Coma 2, Vicious Sisters, We Were Here Together, and A Case of Distrust. Overall, I think there are some pretty good picks in here. At least half of them are games that I'm like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Super excited to have in this bundle. The other six uh, don't appeal to me necessarily, but you might disagree with me on that. So let's go ahead. Take a look at these games individually, because I got a lot to say about them. Vampire. Twilight is a bit past its prime, but the scars are still felt every time vampires get mentioned by anybody. Luckily, the cool thing these days is zombies, and it's a lot harder to make zombies sexy. They have to rely on compelling stories and interesting characters instead. This is a vampire story that doesn't rely on being overly sexy to sell. You play as a vampire doctor that needs to go against his Hippocratic Oath in order to stay alive. It features factions that react to your choices, areas that decay based on how often you feed there, and it's basically more than I ever thought it could possibly be. I was offered a review key for this one, and I ended up passing on it, largely because I had Twilight in the back of my mind and I'm like, oh, vampires are stupid. Oh, how wrong I was. The game is more than I ever thought it could possibly be. One, the game looks freaking amazing. Two, it tells a fantastic story with compelling characters. The gameplay itself is pretty nice, although combat can be slightly sloppy if you aren't using the lock-on feature, like, constantly. It can also get a little bit grindy due to not being able to fast travel and needing to fight your way to wherever you're going. But if you're looking for an open-world RPG with a vampire bent, this is the one and only pick and I'm so glad it came out as amazing as it did. As far as headliners for this bundle, oof, this is a heavy hitter. Hello Neighbor and Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek Collection. Tiny Build publishes some decent games, but the problem that they seem to constantly have is that the concepts are always half-baked. I think that's more a problem with the developers, but I think the publisher has to take some of the credit for that. Why are they pushing games out the door when they're seemingly only half done? They should send the developer back to the drawing board, right? Well, Hello Neighbor is no exception to this rule. This game did get some attention, and I was interested to give it a spin, but it was so disappointing on almost every level. I love games that allow you to snoop and sneak, but the entirety of Hello Neighbor feels like a beta test. The controls are ineffectual and pretty sticky, I think that comes down to the physics, which are a total nightmare in themselves, and that becomes a major problem when you need to do things like stack boxes to solve a puzzle. The puzzles become a test of patience, as you simply attempt to get the fucking boxes to stay still. I see the solution in my mind, but getting there is, is half the battle. The game is mercifully short, but it doesn't offer much worth experiencing in my opinion. The Hide and Seek Collection is the prequel that probably never should have existed. It runs on the same engine, with the same problems, and the same uninteresting story. There are some supposed horror elements in both titles, but unless you're a baby or an extremely skittish rodent, this game probably won't do a damn thing to actually scare you. I won't say that I'm disappointed in its inclusion in this bundle. There's probably a reason that a lot of people chose to play it and or upload it on YouTube, but I just don't get it personally. The popularity of this game is an absolute anomaly, but whatever, to each their own, I suppose. Wargroove! Hell yes, Wargroove! I've been playing this game since release, and I even double-dipped to snag this game on the Switch. 
when it was on sale. Yes, it is that good. Advance Wars basically waffle stomps the shit out of Fire Emblem in my book. Keeping visibility with scouts while pelting the enemy with artillery, then rushing in to capture their forward bases is just ugh, always a thrill. And as much as I love Advance Wars, Wargroove took things to the next level by dragging the entire concept into a high fantasy aesthetic. The story is pretty quality and loves to bring the humor in on side missions, but even once you have the story completely wrapped with S ranks all across the board, you can take things into the arcade mode and build your own battle. The music is catchy, the pixel art graphics look amazing. I honestly can't think of one thing that I truly dislike about Wargroove. I will say that the difficulty curve and unit interactions can be a lot for newcomers to grab hold of, but it really does add to the depth of things once you get into the full swing. This was in my 2019 top indie games list, and it continues to hold strong in 2020. Much like Advance Wars, I think I'll be coming back to this one for a long time to come. If you couldn't tell already, this is absolutely, hands down, my favorite game in this entire bundle. If you like strategy, if you like fantasy, if you like Fog of War, definitely don't turn your back on Wargroove. Call of Cthulhu! I streamed Call of Cthulhu a couple of years ago when it came out, and I was really heavy into streaming at that time. As much as I loved the Lovecraft mythos, it didn't end up making this game anything better than just average. That saddens me because... There is a lot of potential in this game that just never gets fulfilled. There's a skill tree that doesn't end up coming into play really aside from determining which ending you'll get. The story is on the enjoyable side of monotonous, but the gameplay doesn't really hold up well enough to keep you going through the motions for very long. A lot of the puzzles lack true logic and end up just being a process of elimination. Just go in there and bang your head against things until you randomly stumble into the solution that wasn't alluded to anywhere else in the entire fucking game. And all those negatives are still not to say anything about the failed lip syncing or crappy animations or point and click detective sessions. If you couldn't tell quite yet, I'm not a big fan of this game. Even the might of the Elder Gods couldn't save Call of Cthulhu from abject oblivion. I love Focus Home Interactive, they made a lot of good stuff, Insurgency comes to mind first and foremost. They actually gave me Insurgency Sandstorm, which was super cool. But Call of Cthulhu, and as much as I shit on it during that stream, is the reason that we don't work together anymore. Which is super sad. If I had known how much I would dislike the game before I booted it up, then I probably wouldn't have streamed it at all, but I got the key, so I felt the need to stream it, and the developer got really uh, upset. And, and doesn't talk to me anymore, which is sad. So RIP Focus Home Interactive, I'm sorry uh, we couldn't work things out, but I basically refuse to lie to developers and also my audience about how much I like a game or not. We gotta keep it honest, that's basically the only thing that can keep a YouTube gaming channel afloat, because there are channels out there that say every game is good, and if that's the case, then none of them are. You know what I mean? Anyways, moving on. Little Big Workshop. I really like games that put the player in control of production of some sort. Big Pharma was passable. Jurassic World Evolution is one we've talked about before. Prison Architect is a sleeper hit as well. Rise of Industry, the reigning champ, of course. I think I mention it every fucking video. Little Big Workshop fits in right between Big Pharma and Jurassic World Evolution on the bottom side of the ladder. It's fun, but not expansive enough to keep up with the likes of my favorites. It also has the same cartoonish, generic style that I've seen in like every fucking simulator game from here to Two Point Hospital. I don't know why it's such a popular pick, but I gotta admit that it isn't my favorite. It makes it feel extremely generic. However, I will say that it makes things a lot more satisfying when an unfortunate worker lights themselves on fire. The gameplay loop definitely needs some smoothing out, and I'm disappointed with that because I expected a lot more from this title. It's definitely above average, but above average wasn't quite enough to grip me because this is a genre that I really enjoy. I was expecting it to blow my socks off, and quite simply, it didn't. Genesis Alpha 1 Deluxe Edition. That's a mouthful. Half management game, half FPS roguelike, and it doesn't manage to do either one particularly well. It could have been a fantastic experience, unlike anything I've ever experienced before. 
Instead, what got released is a bare-bones, kind of beta-feeling build that probably should have spent another year or two in the oven. It's extremely rough around the edges, despite how pretty it looks. Headshots don't seem to matter, crew members will ignore problems that have lethal consequences, small issues can escalate and set you so far back that it will take hours of gameplay to catch up to where you were. It's an exercise in futility and repetition. And really, I could stomach all of that if the game felt fun to play and had an engaging gameplay loop, but it fails on that front as well. The concept of the game is original and amazing, but the execution leaves basically everything to be desired. Given more development, it could be great. But as it stands, it is very underwhelming. Automa Chef. So after Humble went and ran through the entire Zaktronics catalog, they went to Team 17 and they said, Hey, you got any programming games? People are saying they really like these programming games. Who the fuck said that they like the programming games? We could fight right now. At least Automa Chef isn't as wildly difficult as some of those other Zaktronics titles. I think most people could probably get a grasp on this one. You're basically tasked with building a robotic restaurant, which is something that I understand infinitely more than synthesizing pharmaceuticals or debugging computer programs. Just make a cake! There's a lot of attention to detail, and plenty of replay value to soak up your long days spent avoiding actually cooking anything sufficient for yourself. Irony. I'm surprised that Little Big Workshop and Automa Chef both wound up in this bundle because they're fairly similar. But in a video game versus, which is one of my other series that's currently abandoned, paused, whatever. <laughs> but in a battle between the two, I do think that Automa Chef would take the win. Mostly because you don't have any workers to try and push around and make them do stuff. All you have to work with is lovely, reliable robots. And that's the world I want to live in, for a little while at least. <laughs> Through the darkest of times. People really fucking love World War II, man. Thankfully, this is a rather interesting take on World War II. You won't be loading up a rifle and heading to the front lines like every other game. Instead, you take on the role of a resistance leader and sow the seeds of discord as Germany slowly shifts from the Weimar Republic into full-blown Nazism. There are a few different faces to get acquainted with, and they all have their different skill sets. The skills in this game are secrecy, empathy, propaganda, strength, and literacy. Aside from strength, you can tell that it takes quite a different route than the standard RPG fare. While I certainly like the ideas in this game, the story, characters, and execution are all less than stellar. The artwork is nice, and the game is certainly playable, but I'd wager that it won't do much to change your life or the way you look at gaming. The writing feels very modern, and it managed to break my immersion pretty consistently. As a side note to the devs, I'd wager that it would be worth investing in Dayton Does to write out your next game. Here's my card. Call me. <laughs> American Fugitive! I tend to throw shade on quite a few of the games in this bundle that a lot of people seem to enjoy playing. Well, this is the game that will welcome the shade to be thrown back the other way. Oh, how the turntables, or something. You guys might know how much I enjoy loud and dumb action games. And American Fugitive fully embraces what it is, so I gotta show it some respect for that. You can easily draw parallels to early GTA titles all you like, but... American Fugitive goes a little bit deeper, with a whole breaking and entering system that allows you to rob houses. Awesome! If the owner is home, you can attempt to subdue them, or just feed them a fucking lead salad. But if things go south, it's gonna get hairy. The plot is honestly pretty inconsequential. You're being framed for murder. Prove that you didn't do the murder by murdering a bunch of other people. It's dumb, but it knows that it's dumb, and it embraces that fact. Is it a great game in the traditional sense? Not really. But I'll be damned if it isn't a shitload of fun. This was sort of the sleeper hit of the bundle for me. I knew I would enjoy Vampire. I knew I would enjoy Wargroove. I had no idea how much I would enjoy American Fugitive. The Coma 2, Vicious Sisters. 
I'm generally not the person to come to if you're looking for an opinion on horror games. I've seen it all, and my nerves are shot to hell, and the genre is fucking inundated with garbage that relies on being spooky instead of just telling a good story. Well, the coma manages to tell a good story while still maintaining that spook vibe. I think that's because South Korea is just notoriously good at creating horror movies and horror games and movies and games in general. I mean, I'm certainly not a Korea boo, but living in the Philippines has given me a renewed kind of respect for that little peninsula. Limited inventory, well-built quick-time events, and some extremely good artwork managed to make the Coma 2 worth a run, even if you aren't a big fan of horror games. The bar is set really fucking low for indie horror titles, but the Coma 2 manages to rocket into orbit over that bar. While this game and genre is not necessarily in my wheelhouse, I will say that it is definitely objectively a good game. I think basically anybody out there should be able to squeeze at least a little bit of enjoyment out of the Coma 2. We were here together. The third installment in a trilogy, that trilogy being We Were Here, We Were Here Too, and then now We Were Here Together. Does this iteration stack up to its predecessors? Not for the most part, in my opinion. The graphics are a step up, which is great. But unless you're a fan of sports games or Call of Duty, then you'll likely agree with me that upgraded graphics are not a sufficient reason for an entirely new iteration of a game. Okay, well they do allow you to actually see your player too, which is new, but is it really enough to justify an entirely new game that you have to pay for? Puzzles are well built. Some are a little obtuse and require some poking around in the dark, but you'll get there eventually. The game doesn't do much, if anything, story or lore-wise to move the series forward. I might just be a little too jaded from watching a free-to-play puzzle, which was We Were Here, move into a paid sequel, We Were Here Too, and then the big cash grab that may or may not be We Were Here Together. You could also chalk all this extra criticism up to the fact that I'm not really into puzzle games. While it isn't a terrible game, I do think that it needs to do just a bit more to justify its existence, which is something that I often say about myself, hence these YouTube videos. A case of distrust. Art Deco. Art Deco. Art Deco. Art Deco. Motherfucking, shit-eating, donkey-raping, testicle-sucking, greasy, dirty, gross, disgusting, fucking overrated Art Deco! Whew. Now that I got that out of the way, Nancy drew your way through an SJW's wet dream as you slip into the heels of Phyllis Cadence Malone, meh, and go traipsing around 1920 San Francisco during the Prohibition. The entire game attempts to paint itself as sort of a novel, and the page turn transitions and nicely done character portraits do add a nice little something to the adventure. But at the end of the day, I feel like having themes of sexism, racism, poverty, and more shoved down my throat so ham-fistedly means that I'm gonna need a drink before the game is over. Sometimes a game can just be a game, bro. It doesn't have to be a political statement. I actually prefer it that way because I play games to escape from all the bullshit surrounding us. But whatever, I didn't make the game. Too bad, so sad. And getting back to that drink, I don't think it would really help too much in getting through this game because a case of distrust does not hold your hand. And that is a part that I like. It allows you to really think like a private investigator, but overall, the gameplay itself and the heavy political messaging both feel like a throwback to 2010. We can do better than this. This game is about on par with a dollar store detective novel. I'd rather pick up a Dean Koontz book, and I fucking hate Dean Koontz. So, what do I think of this bundle? Aside from going out on an extremely negative note, I think that this bundle is a banger, basically. It's one of the best Humble Choice bundles that we've seen so far. I, I know it probably won't vibe with everybody out there, but the fact that you get all 12 of the games, that's, that's pretty compelling. I like that a lot. Is it going to be a new thing? Are they just trying to up the numbers for Humble Choice? I don't know. But if they keep putting out bundles of this quality, then I don't think they'd have that much trouble doing so. I did bang around maybe like half the games in this bundle, but half of that half, 
I only banged around because they had so much potential that I feel like should have been lived up to just a little bit more. Vampire, fucking amazing game. Hello Neighbor, it's probably popular for a reason, right? Wargroove, oh my god. <laughs> it has taken me by storm. Fantastic strategy experience. Call of Cthulhu, it could have been so much more. I wish it was so much more. But as it stands, like I said, it's on the enjoyable side of monotonous. Little Big Workshop, aside from the graphical style, I don't actually have that much to complain about. Genesis Alpha 1 Deluxe looks amazing, fantastic concept, really innovative, and, and just kind of fell on its face because I think it was trying to do too much. I'd say that it's still worth a try, though. Automa Chef, that is an amazing game, if you like programming stuff. And it will teach you how to build a cake. Don't you want to build a cake? Yes. <laughs> Lovely. Through the Darkest of Times, ah, uh, it's an interesting concept. I think that the writing could have been better, and in a game like this, the writing really is basically everything, and it fell kind of flat on that, on that front. Largely because it was too modern, you know. If we're going back to 1930, then you gotta write things a little bit differently to keep me sucked in. American Fugitive, loud, dumb, amazing. <laughs> I like it, I know a lot of people probably won't and be like, eh, GTA clone, but it is so much more than that. The Coma 2 Vicious Sisters, for the horror fans out there, and also just fans of good games. Running and hiding and pretty well-built quick time events. Yeah, it's worth a try. We Were Here Together, ah, uh, it's a good game too. I basically crapped on it because I saw it go from free to play to a paid game, but at the end of the day, I'm very happy that the developers are able to monetize their work because I know that a lot of time and effort probably went into it. So if people are willing to pay for it, then I won't shit on it too hard, obviously. A Case of Distrust is basically the one game that I actually legitimately hate besides Hello Neighbor. Those two games are at the absolute bottom of the bundle, followed by Genesis 1 Alpha, Call of Cthulhu, Through the Darkest of Times, Little Big Workshop, Autumn Chef, The Coma 2, and then the top three is, is really hard to sort out. I guess American Fugitive, then Vampire, then Wargroove is what I'm going to go with for now. If you ask me tomorrow, the order might change. <laughs> but yeah, overall, a really fucking awesome bundle. I'm looking forward to seeing what Humble's doing uh, next month. And this is the kind of bundle that makes me actually hopeful for things. That, you know, bundles might not become a thing of the past relatively soon which we speculated about in the Discord for a little bit. Some interesting discussions going on there. You boys should drop on by. I'd appreciate it. I'd also appreciate if you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the video. Check out the links in the description to Twitter, Patreon, and as I mentioned, Discord. Dash is poppin'. Sometimes it takes me a while to reply to comments, but in the Discord, I'm, I'm basically always active. As for the patrons, those lovely, lovely people, Thank you guys so much for helping me to live the dream. Just Austin, Robert Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radim Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and the OG, Nico the Legend. I appreciate you guys so much, and I appreciate the rest of you for watching the video this far. You are the truest of heroes. We'll probably bounce back to Fanatical in the next bundle banter, or I might try something interesting. I've had the music in my heart, like I've been listening to a lot of rap lately, so maybe I'll make another rap video, or parody song, or... Or do something completely off the wall. Who can say? But yeah, I appreciate you guys. I'm loving the support. I'm also loving this humble choice. So so pick it up. And if you're a new subscriber, please use my referral link. But anyways, friends. I will see you in the next one. Whatever it is. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. And I shall see you then. So until then, friends. Bye-bye.